Hello, Bill the Artist here, back with another How to Draw lesson, and today we are doing Bellatrix Lestrange. It's one of the Harry Potters, we're back in doing more Harry Potter stuff, but before we go any further, please do like and subscribe, tick the bell to be notified when every new video becomes available, and we've got lots and lots of How to Draw videos coming, and I'm aiming to do one Harry Potter character every week but lots of other subjects in between. But anyway, previously we have done Sirius. We have done the sorting hat on top of Harry's head. I have done Harry as well. If you check out the link to the How to Draw Harry Potter's uh, characters playlist, there's lots and lots of videos in there. Like I say, we've got the whole kit and caboodle. There we have the Dark Lord lurking underneath and also underneath Sirius. Oh! We have Harry. <laughs> There's the full Harry. I was actually looking for that, thinking, where's that guy? And he, actually, he's underneath Dumbledore, uh, hiding in the pile of the drawings. But again, these are just such good fun to encourage you with your drawing. But I've also done uh, the logos. We have done uh, Ollivander's One Shop. But we have gone through and we have done the houses. So we have Ravenclaw. Whoops, we have Hufflepuff, we have Slytherin, we also have Gryffindor and the Hogwarts crest itself and how to do all of those shields. Now I have just started doing as well, these are my local football teams. So we have Crew Alexandra, we have Port Vale and we have Stoke City. And I'm going to do other uh, sports badges, logos, uh, premiership football teams, that kind of thing, just because I love sharing how to do drawing and making it really, really simple. Now again, more portraits, if you check out how to draw the portraits playlist, link in the cards in the description, you will find links to things like Ariana Grande and the SAS Who Dares Wins mob uh, from the Channel 4 programme did all five of them and there's lots more on there and they have been added and growing including Billie Eilish and I'm going to be doing more and more of these portraits but again do check them out but I use the same techniques whether it's for something more complex like a portrait like we're doing today either full face or a figure one or even things like Queen Barb from the Trolls and all the other cartoon uh, lessons that I've done so if you check out how to draw just the how to draw playlist there's over 120 130 videos on their lessons now and growing and growing and growing some of the time lapses are on there too but i use the same techniques to grow and develop your skills in drawing from absolute basics right the way through and i use the same techniques and explain them in real time now again there are things like the simpsons uh, the incredibles toy story uh, there's all kinds on there of uh, Olaf and oh, Shaun the Sheep and Danger Mouse and the Lego Movie. There's all lots and lots and lots of really good, interesting characters to draw. But if I just carefully move those out of the way and get ready, here we have our piece of paper for Balatrix. Now. Do check out the link in the cards in the description, the description uh, that's below, for the video on laying down the grids. Again, this is a two centimeter grid. This is A4 paper. If you check out the banner, all the actual marking points for this are on that banner now. And so you can see that and it'll work its way through. Now, I do these grids in two centimeters but here is the center line this is a4 paper 210 millimeters across by 297 down the side that is 21 centimeters by 29.7 now i do this because it helps it actually helps to break the drawing down into chunks now i also you could go straight into this drawing uh, using the grid system and just start doing the outline but at first i put down shapes now again check out how to draw anything part one and I say in there, you can draw anything from a bird, a bee, a fleet, a tree, a horse, a house, or anything else, including these portraits, by breaking a drawing down, a subject down, into simple shapes. 
you can actually construct your foundation and then build your actual drawing. And that's what I like doing. I kind of like demystifying drawing. Now, also, please do use the hashtag drawing with Billy and you'll see me on Instagram. Again, check out uh, all my social media because that's where I post all the updates of all the work that I do. And it's just great to see people who are using these tutorials and growing their skills. And I've got young children and absolute beginners and they're having a go and they're saying, oh, you know, mine's not very good. Well, I've been drawing now for over 40 years and I wish somebody had taught me these skills right at the beginning. Now, it still takes a long time to draw, learn to draw faces and to do portraiture. But I just love doing this to break the the image down into simple chunks so you can actually do it. Anyway, we had now better get on with drawing Balatrix Lestrange. So here we go. I have my trusty 2B pencil and we are going to get in and start drawing Balatrix. Now, I have chosen this kind of uh, half body portrait. Again, it, it's just great to do in a bit different. I did think about doing a full crop on Balatrix's face, but her mad hair and the great clothes that she wears just lent itself to do this full portrait. And so on this center line, on the 105 line, you can see we've got the top of the hair. So I'm just putting a mark in like I, I tend to do on all of the videos, just where the top is. Now, again, you can use this as kind of a grid system to kind of play battleships in a way where you, it's like, oh, A4, B4, to try and catch the ships. Now, over on the 225 line, right over to the 205, we've got Balatrix's elbow. So I'm just putting a little mark there. And this is gonna help you to not come outside of the actual paper and actually start placing your image down. So here on the 185, between the 45 and the 65, we've got the side of Balatrix's kind of tummy coming down. So I'm just putting that little line in first. Now these are going to be the points that will actually help us to build everything up. But now we're going to start putting the shapes in. So again, on the centre line, above the 65, we've got the top of Balatrix's forehead. Now you can see here, so I'm just drawing now down, bottom just above the 125. Uh, here we go. So that's about just below halfway. So I'm drawing now this box shape. And that's where Balatrix's face is going to go. Now her nose is on the 85. And so here I'm just drawing a little triangle. Now her eye is right over the 85 line. So I've got a little rectangle there and a larger rectangle around the outside. I'm just going to put a little curve under. That's going to be where her eye socket is and her eyebrow. Now again, on this side, we can see her eyes behind her hair. So I'm just putting a little rectangle in. And then you can see there's the rectangle that we're going to put in for her eyebrow. And then, we, like I say, we've got that little V in place already. Now, oh, I also say that I actually draw these grids on darker than you have to. When you're doing it, you can do it really light and that way it's easier to rub out. But I do this so you can actually see what we're doing. So now her mouth is just a little oval and it's just above and then below. I mean, you can just put a rectangle in uh, the 105 line, but you can just put that rectangle in and then kind of second oval for the bottom lip. 
and then you've got that little crease right in the center but we'll kind of detail all that lot up after now you can see right on the center line i've just put a little v in for the bottom of a nose but we're just doing these shapes as quickly as we possibly can now now we've got all of this mad hair and so here just below the 25 line we've got a rectangle of bright light and then we've got a, of hair highlighted and then coming across from the 105 got a little rectangle there and then a bit of a triangle shape and that's going to be the hair coming down there rectangle there now right up at the top so coming across from the 65 to the 45 we've got a diagonal and I'm just going to curve that over and then down the side of her head we've got this gigantic mass coming down to the 145 coming all the way down so I'm just drawing a triangle there and then I'm going to draw another triangle there and this hair curves around now her neck is just a simple little rectangle but we want a V so I've just getting a little V and then here below on the 145 line we've got the little bird skull pendant on her necklace and you can see how it's kind of past the halfway point and then comes down halfway there so I'm just drawing a little triangle there little rectangle above and there's the V of the actual cord of the necklace so now we've got Again, here now we've got a little V. This is the gap in the top of Balatrix's blouse. And then we've got this rectangle. You can see here just this kind of little rectangular shape coming down. Then I want another rectangle. And that's going to be from a shoulder down to a right breast. And then just curve got a kind of triangle there and then we've got this over to his right shoulder so now below the 125 we've got the top of the shoulder so I'm just putting that line in quickly now her right left arm we've got the elbow down here you can see how it comes up to the 145 line past the 165 and so I'm just drawing a rectangle and then we want to come down to the bottom to the 145 line I want another re another rectangle and then I want another rectangle for the kind of it's like a kind of it's the end of a sleeve but it kind of becomes a part glove coming over a hand so there I've got another rectangle going up and then we've got a little finger so a little finger it's just a rectangle there third finger rectangle this is coming right over the center line then you've got second finger rectangle there then coming down to the knuckle and then you've got the first finger going right across the center line long rectangle there triangle for the nail put a triangle on there triangle for that nail or you could just put another rectangle to indicate the space the place where the fingernail is going to go 
then we want the rectangle coming down to the top of the hand and then we want the thumb we've got another rectangle there for that thumb then the back comes up and here we can see we've got a nice triangle shape and these squares made here now a sh where the top of a sleeve joins the shoulder I'm just putting in a couple of quick little boxes and rectangle shapes now we've got off the front of a dress we can see here coming up from the hand so that comes up and we've got this is like the front of the bodies and we've got this nice box shape and then coming up from the 85 line we've got a rectangle which is her wand and then underneath we've got this triangle and then we can extend that down off the page and then just above the 245 line we've got another rectangle there and then we've just got some simple lines and we need so now here we've got coming right the way down a long rectangle for the hair just a bit of a triangle how it cascades over and again the same for the hair coming down and I'm just going to indicate below the 205 we've got this V shape where the hair comes down over the left breast and so there just using simple shapes we've got a lot of the proportions in that are what we need for our actual placing so if you hadn't got the grid lines in putting these shapes in would actually help you to uh, I'm just putting, indicating where the dark is there on the top of her head as well but putting these shapes in help you place everything before you build up a detail line for your drawing so now we're going to start putting the actual details down and we're going to start and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my putty rubber again I'm using this 2B pencil first to get everything down and because it's a nice bright light I'm just going to get rid of those darker lines at the top of a lips and we want to indicate From the corners of a mouth to that little V on a top lip I'm just going to curve that line over and then curve it down and I'm using this paper to rest my hand so I don't keep smudging the the grid lines and the little construction lines that we've put in at the beginning now we're going to do the shadow underneath her bottom lip and then curve that up as well and then we can curve down to the corner kind of a frowny scowly face and Helena Bonham Carter is just such a great character she's just great to play Balatrix now the bottom of the nose and the bottom of this V and then the two nostrils
So we've got the two nostrils, which are quite dark, coming down to the centre of the nose. And then we've got the back of the nostrils just curving around ever so slightly. And then the shape goes up either side of the center line. You've got that slight triangular slight shape of Balatrix's nose. Now, just sharpening my pencil a little bit. Now the right eye is right on the center line. I'm just marking the points either side of where they need to come in. And so we've got triangle, the kind of, it's a C shape, but it's pointed in the corner and the tear duct where it comes underneath, just underneath the 85 line. And then that curves around and kind of comes to the quarter point. So we just need to curve that now very carefully. And then it flattens and then curves down and joins on that side. Now we've got that lovely spherical shape right in the center. But don't join the line underneath at the bottom because you've got that kind of highlight. You've got the highlight on the top of her lower eyelid. Now right at the top just off center and I'm just indicating and leaving, just drawing a little shape around. And that's the highlight right on the top of a pupil and iris. I'm just going to leave that as white as possible. And I'll just darken that in, put the pupil in, then darken it. And now we've got an eye starting to look out at us. Now, just above, we've got the fold above her eye. And we can bring that crease down, just follow the shape. And then we've got going right to the 125 line. Now, just curving the shadow up to where her eyebrow is. Now we've got this dark shape going right to the edge of her nose and then you've got the eyebrow going up just to the right of the eyebrow uh, the eye it curves up the pupil and iris goes up and we've got that thicker part and then it curves down the corner of her eye socket and joins the shadow part there and already you can see we've got Balatrix starting to look out at us now Here, her eye is underneath all of her, her, not of her hair. Try saying that too quickly. And if you kind of do the size shape, you can see that like the full eye and then the kind of size is the same. 
over to where her eye is. So you've got like another, the same amount of gap from the corner of the eye to the tear duct and then over again. And that's the kind of gap that you're looking for. Now we're just going to indicate carefully Ballatrix's eye underneath her hair. But this one's very, very shadowed. So we've just got to look carefully. You've got the top coming over and then curving down. And then you want the same pupil in the center with the iris. We've got a hair coming over the top, which will indicate more. And then you've got the shape of an eyebrow that's going to come over. And this one you can see is kind of more straight. It's not as angled. So we're just indicating where that's going to be. Then we want the shape of the crease of her eyelid above the top. And then just follow that curve down. Unfortunately, the hair, we can just indicate a little bit of the hair, it's going to cover a lot of her eye for us. And then we want a little triangle. And that's the shadow caused of the shape of the underneath of Ballatrix's eye. Again, the same on this side now. We can curve that crease line coming down underneath. And then we want the shape of the bag of her eye underneath her lower eyelid is a little V. Again, that's how simple, just using those simple shapes and the guidelines that we put in, we can actually start building Ballatrix's face up. Now, I'm following the kind of curls just coming up on Ballatrix's hair to her forehead. And you see here, we've just got this kind of S shape that comes down. It's just this wiggly shape that comes down. And just keep looking at your reference, curving, that curves down and then comes over that eye. Goes up to the top of a forehead. And you can see already Ballatrix's face is starting to look out at us. What we're going to do now is get the shape of her face in. So we want the line of a forehead coming down, then we've got this hair, and it's really nice because the hair being so wiggly, you can see on the 125 line, is creating a lot of shapes for us and that'll be a bonus. But behind the hair here, where we've got this line of the box, we've got the side of a cheekbone going into the shadow. So I'm carefully indicating up where those shadows are. And then we've got this fantastic diagonal cheek line, jaw, the, the jaw, the jaw shadow on the side of a cheek coming down. What we want now, because we've got this hair that's just so wispy and bonkers, it kind of comes around everywhere. You know, it's just this fantastic mass of hair. And we've got this bright highlight. So we're now just going right the way up and indicating where that mass of hair is flowing 
and you see just over that corner we've got the shape here we've got this highlight of hair and a kind of triangle of shadow there and it just curves down again even things like this this hair you, you sketch quickly and I'm twisting the pencil to keep my pencil sharp you sketch quickly but in the direction the hair is going and this just helps to indicate real hair uh, I get asked in the comments about you know do a hair tutorial every person who's got hair I'm doing a hair tutorial uh, so just enjoy the videos and have a go skip to the hair parts if you just want to do the hair watch them and then just have a go so now here we've got this like, wispy mass of hair coming down to the one two five line and it curves around and under and so now we're going to put in this side of a face that's exposed and not covered in any hair and this is why you put the guidelines in because it really does help so again we've got the square kind of need to come a little bit lower so I'm looking at the gap so the size of the lips is yeah it's going to be the bottom of a chin it's a little bit lower than that little tiny construction line that we put in and it just comes across a little bit and then curves off and then we've got that hair that comes down covering it on that side and then you can see where that shadow on the side of a cheek comes down and then creates a shape you got the shadow as well underneath the lips that then kind of frame the jaw that's highlighted here the front of a chin coming down from the sides of a jaw so now from this corner point now on the 85 105 we can see we've got the side of a cheek and then it curves around and comes across to meet just to the side of a nose so you've got this kind of flat part of a chin just comes across and then curves up and we've got this lovely angle coming across And then we can just indicate some more hair coming down and then it covers there but that's the side of the cheek that we actually need now her neck we've got the little construction line that we put in to help us what I'm going to do first is we're going to put in the just oops swapping my pencil over to the one in there just because it's already sharpened I'm going to put in the bird skull pendant now we've got this little triangle in and so we've got the point right at the bottom and this will help us we've got the shape at the top and then got a little circle for the eye and then that curves around then we come down to the point we go back up to the point then there's a kind of bridge nose part and then you've got the hole for the nostril And then you've got the inner part of the skull behind the eye socket. Then you've got that straight line coming down to the front of the nose. And then you've got the little triangle with a line on. Now above it we've just got a little circle. And then you've got the clasp that goes around 
the chord. Now, the chord is comes out and it's just below the halfway point on the center line. And it goes up and it's just past the halfway point within a hair. Now we're kind of looking on thirds on this line and we just want to curve it down to go into the connecting part of the clasp the, that holds the pendant onto the actual cord. And then you can see we've got, we just need to extend that, that construction line out for Balatrix's neck. And that curves down and that's where that joins the, the neckline. You've got the shadow that comes down and goes out and that's a collarbone here. We've got the shape of a collarbone that's creating these shades. Now we've got the bottom part of a neck in between the two collarbones. We've just got a little line that goes up. Now Balatrix's dress, the V kind of opening part, you see that comes down, goes right through the 105, 145 point and it kind of goes across, comes underneath the bird skull pendant and then just cuts through the cross point on the 85, 165 then you can see it just kind of wobbles a little bit and then comes right down just above the 185 and then it curves and so here we can see we've just got this kind of C shape if you just think of it simple C shape and so that curves around and comes down and joins in the centre and then coming up you can see just below, we've got the top of a shoulder. We want to draw the line in, but you can see it just curves. You've got a little bit of shadow and then it curves again right over the 85 line. Just a little bit of a curve and then that goes up. And then we want these folds so you've got a kind of little V shape there and the highlight and the shoulder curves and we can now bring the curve of her right breast down and that comes out over the kind of halfway point. Again, it's just now a C shape that comes underneath the 185. And then you've got that fold that goes up to the center point of a blouse. And then we've got the curve of that line got these folds that are going up and creating shape and shadow and then you've got these little swirls now these are quite interesting to just put on but you can see you kind of got a little triangle shape there and at first you so see you just got a little circle that goes in it's like a six and then this one above it it's a bit like an eight if you draw an eight, but don't join it up, that's how you've got that shape. Just need to make that a little bit bigger. There we go. And then the swirl going off right on the side. And again, underneath. Just a couple little circles. And that one, that's just 
very simply you can just put these little squiggles in that help build the shape up but you can see now Bellatrix really starting to look out at us and we've got this mass of hair again that's going up to a cheek here right on the corner so that's the darker bit you've got that triangle going down and then coming down by a neck now we've got this fantastic mass of hair so I'm just going to use the side of the pencil I'm just going to indicate it coming right the way over and we've got the construction lines in and so I'm just kind of indicating very loosely the way that the waves will actually work on a hair and that comes all the way down now again on this part this comes over the front of a neck very light and wispy but we'll just be indicating that and then this comes down we've got wispy parts coming all the way down you can see how the twirls and the hair and the curls just come right the way down address to below the 225 line so I'm just indicating those wiggles all the way up now we want to shoulder so we've got the dress coming up it just touches the 125 line just kind of left of center and then it curves off it comes out curves down and then we've got this incredible lacing up but what we need is the shape first that's created by the top of the shoulder and the top of the sleeve going around formed on top of her arm and so we've got some simple reference points that we can actually use so I'm going to start here but you've got you've got this kind of C shape that we indicated in just by creating a couple of little boxes now here we want the bottom of the C that comes down and curves underneath her armpit and then you've got the armpit from the arm going over the armpit you've just got those little lines it's a bit like a Y falling over on its side and then past the halfway point up here you've got the top of the shoulder curving it out and then it comes down and it's just slightly pulled because of the lace so just put a little wiggle on it it's not a straight line then we can curve that up to meet the shoulder line and then our actual skin just a slight curve and you need the dress to be outside of that skin but a shoulder you can see here at the top of a sleeve it's just past the shoulder skin comes past the 165 line now this is all the hard part uh, you know this is really important doing these using the grids and these shapes helps you get the, sh the, the actual foundation right so that when you're actually shading in it's really really simple and quick so we've got the top of the sleeve and it just comes just to the right of the center point goes over you've got a kind of corner point and then it comes down just to the right of the 145 165 line 
and it curves down underneath where a shadow of the arm and her armpit is and then here above we've got so if you just draw a little circle that's the kind of eyelet hole and then we've got this long rectangle and that's the cord coming out from this line here and then we can bring down the shadow of the arm and it just curves a little bit and then right on the 165 line it curves around now if we just bring the back of a left arm down curves and goes through about the halfway point and curves out and we'll finish that off in a moment we've now got most of the outline down for the top left part of the shoulder and you can see she's really looking out at us now more and more and these are simple lines and I'm going fairly slowly just to explain and give you the pointers that you need now I'm going to draw a little circle there that's the eyelet we've got a little circle there then we've got another one here but there's nothing in it so I'm drawing another one inside then we want here just to the left of the corner of the 165 145 we want another circle and then another one just past actually on the line now the lace goes in there in fact we need another one somewhere up there I'm just indicating one and so it's literally just now dot to dot so I'm just going to draw these lines in first where you can see them going across and that's got a curve so those ones are straight oh hang on just got that wrong let's rub that one out that's how simple it is because I was just looking at uh, the eyelets that I've drawn but that one's not got one in it's the one above it there you go and this is why you keep looking at your reference to do your drawing and then this one curves and follows the line of a shoulder so we're just curving that line and then this one curves up and down goes underneath and then we've got a lovely piece of cord that curves out goes past the 165 line and then comes down to just past halfway and then we've got this cord comes out over the top comes down and goes underneath and then we've got another you can see it's just like a d-shape there of that cord going back through the eyelet now I just need a sharper pencil now I am guessing that that goes underneath just because hairs in the way and so that'll then come over the top no it just looks like it's going over the top so I'm going over the top on that one and then coming underneath for those and then that goes underneath but over the top now this one got that curve going up coming down going underneath the fabric and we've got a bit of a knot there so I'm just drawing a little circle with that knot on and then bringing that leather cord all the way down and just thickening that line up and the same with that one and that goes out and now you can see again just using simple shapes we're getting Balatrix actually in
Now we're going to finish off her left arm coming all the way down. So now we've got this elbow point here. But the arm, you can see, curves out a little bit. It's not just a straight line going down. So the muscle underneath is pushing the fabric out. And that comes down and then curves and then the elbow just points out a little bit. And the same as we come under. So we put that box in, but we need to come down through this line past the 185 line. So I'm curving the elbow, coming down, and just putting a couple little curves, and then where this fabric comes underneath the left wrist, comes in just by the 145 line. And we want a little kind of D-shape. And then it curves down underneath the hand. And then curves back up through the 125 line up to a little finger. And you can see where we can come up. It's about halfway. And then we need to curve that line up and over. And there's kind of little bit of leather toggle there. Curves back. And then you've got these crease lines of the fabric. Now, where her arm comes up, I'm going to come from where we've come down from a shoulder down the front past where the bicep is. And here you can see it comes straight down where it comes through the 225 line. And then it comes out and we've got a little triangle there. And we've got right by the centre on the 165 line, we've got a little pyramid shape and another little triangle. Like I say, just little triangles. And that needs to be about by the third line. So just going to rub that out. Join that up. And then we've got, I'm just putting a little guideline in. Then we can follow this down. Curves. Then we've got a little knobble up where the fabric is just creating a little bit of lift curves over the 145 line and then comes down and joins the wrist down there now here we can see underneath the 265 line we've got the shadow line indicated now as it comes up to her left elbow we've got these creases. There's a U shape, little shape there. Crease just above the 225 line and then off these, we've got just these little crease lines indicated. There you can see we've got her full left arm in and now we've just got to finish off the bodies, put these swirly details in and a left arm. And then we've got the full outline down, but this is looking really good. We're going to get the hand in, but first we're going to get this line down on Balatrix's back. And it's just a nice, simple way. If we just follow the lines up that we've got, but like the basic construction line gives us a guide, but now we can use the actual grid lines as well to help us and I'm going to go you can either go up or down so I'm going to go from the bottom and I'm going to work my way up and you can see how it comes it's about 
two thirds of the way across. So it's actually to the right of this line a little bit and then comes through halfway. So I'm going to come up and it just curves a little bit. You go through the kind of halfway point, and then you've got a triangle here. And that curves across, goes up, kinks over, and you can see where it comes right the way up to here. But again, it's not a straight line. It kind of kinks a couple of times, goes over, and then you've got it goes up behind her arm. And that gives you that kind of lovely fluid feel that you've got in fabric because it's not a solid straight line. So here I'm just indicating the hair a little bit more. And that's going to go all the way up. And then we've got the different fabrics and where they join. And so coming down from where this leather laces we've got a bit of fabric coming over going underneath the back of the hair that's a fold and then we come down here and that curves around and then there's a kind of fold at the back there and that comes down to this front leather bodice stitched leather bodice part that we've got right at the front now I'm going to draw on Balatrix's left hand and you can see where we've got the construction lines we can put the curve of the front of the thumb and then just to the side of the 125 line you just put a little slither shape that's the top of a nail thumbnail and the thumb curves up but from just in there we can just curve and indicate that first thumb ring and then there's a second and then right in the corner of this fold we've got the thumb curves down comes underneath the thumb ring and then joins the top of the nail now just went a little bit heavy I say I, I draw these lines on very very heavy so you can see them that's a little bit too heavy because where the nail was because I want that to stand out very well so they're curving that up that's better just so as I don't have a lot of work to do later now on a third finger she's got another kind of you know to match she has matching jewelry so I don't know the earrings are the same but she's got the bird skull on the necklace and there's a bird skull earring so there's probably a couple of bird skulls attached to her earlobes but we can't see those so this is very very simple I've got a triangle going up to the 265 line so there's a triangle and then here I've got a D shape I mean, really, it's just a, it's a bigger triangle, but I'm doing a D with curved corners. And this will help on the placing of the finger. So there's the outer part of the beak. And we curve over the 265 line. And then the head, top of the head curves down come off the side and then we can just indicate kind of little inverted V there and a little slither for the head there just put some marks on and that's where the finger is now we've got four fingers coming out and we put those little rectangles in so now I'm going to draw in first because we've got the rectangles in I'm going to draw in on a third finger this talon of a fingernail and it starts at the halfway point and comes over and I'm just drawing that sharp fingernail shape and then coming out of the underneath 
the right eye of the bird ring, bird skull ring, the knuckle comes up, curves over, and you can see how it bends, a finger bends up. Well, you've got this third joint in a finger, it's pressing against the leather, so it comes across, and then you want that to bend up and go round the top of the fingernail. And underneath, we want the same, it comes down, comes underneath, and goes underneath the beak. And that's a wiggly shape, but fingers are not straight. Now, the second finger comes out and is higher. Now, we've got that knuckle that come, comes up there. I'm going to do it from the fingernails again. So this one comes right over to the 85 line. We've got it's a heck of a talon. But it's a little bit further over. So you've got this you've got that little gap from the edge of the finger to the fingernail to the line. That's how far over it's going to go both ways. Uh, both ends of the nail. Curves around. So they're not lined up, they're kind of further over. Drawing the top of that talent to a sharp point. And the finger comes out. And this one isn't as pressed as that one. So we're coming over to join here. And then you get the knuckle above. So we come up from the finger, curve across, and then the knuckle comes down from the knuckle uh, to the top of the hand, the knuckle on the hand. And then finally, we've got this last nail just past the halfway point, comes to about there, curve over to the point, curve under to the point. Then you get the first section to the joint of the finger, that curves over, then you get the second section, this comes down, and you can see where we've got the top of that little bit of lace that comes out. That's the third section of the finger. Now we've got the little finger. This one, she's filed it off a bit. It's not as sharp a point. So perhaps she broke it in a bit of a duel. So there's that kind of little oval shape. Then we get the finger coming out. And it goes into just above the fabric. And again, I'm not doing a perfectly straight line. I'm just going to go up, just wobbling it a little bit, even though it's fairly straight. And that goes there, curves behind. Now you can see now we've got Balatrix's hand completely in place for us. Now her wand, we've got curved top, the highlight. Now again, it's not straight. So we've got a slight bend in the wand as it comes down off the page. And it gets thicker at the back and tapers in to that thinner shape coming down in a wand holder. And then underneath We've got that strap coming down and then the same on this side from the center line just coming down to where the wand holder holster kind of thing is now the bodice curves and just curves around the front again you can see it's made of leather and it's very kind of rough edged And that curves up, goes above the 265 line before it kicks back in. Now it kicks back in, and you can see here we've got this V shape. But it kicks in and then goes to a little point before it goes up pretty vertically past the 225 line. 
and then just pulls out a little bit. We've got a little curve just past the 205 line. And then we just kind of wiggle this along. Just look and you'll see where the points are. That comes across, then you've got a little V point there, another V point, one going down, across, where the join is. And then that goes right past the 125 line into the dark. Now I'm just going to sharpen my pencil. Just so as I have it nice sharper point on. Now here we've got a kind of X. So I'm drawing that line down and it comes right the way across to there. Then the X we can see we've got going up there. And this is where the joins in the leather are held together by all of these stitches. And then we want this one, this patch, slightly curving going across. Now, you can see how all of these shapes, they look very, very complex because of all of the ties. But if you look at them within the squares, we've now got where the underline, where the pieces of leather are joined together. It becomes very, very simple. So you can see here, we've got one, I'm just drawing a long kind of rectangle, but slightly curved, and that's the, the actual leather strap, the leather lace, that's tying it together. And then you can see we've got one, two, three, four inside this square. So there's another little lace piece. And then you can see you've got three above. So we, we need one there, one there, and one there. And that's how they kind of divide it up. Now, because they're so hand done, they're not kind of machine perfect. You can be a little bit wiggly and it doesn't matter if they're absolutely exact. So you're just drawing these little worms. Now, there's one right on the center line. There's one just at a bit of an angle there. And then above there, we want one there. And then the leather fabric goes out. And then you've got a little oval with a highlight in between each one. Here above a hand, we've got a diagonal one. And then one going the other way. And that's how simple it is just to put that stitching in. Now, in this square here, you can see we've got one just to the right of the line. And then we've got two more. So there's one. There's two. And then we've just got these oval shapes. That goes up to that edge there. We've got a little oval, like little mouths. There's another one. There's another one. And then we want another oval there. And then we want a stitching there, another piece of stitching there. And then kind of right in the corner, we've got a little one there indicate the ovals on the actual line. Again, up here, we've got one diagonal, two and three just below the top. Then we've got one, two at the top part here, one, two, and then we've got one, two just above there and then one underneath. Then again, just oval shapes. And there is one there, but it's quite in the dark shadow. And you can see how it's like kind of 
Dr. Frankenstein's monster stitched together. You know, this is real heavy duty stitching. Now we've got in the shadow here, coming underneath the fingers, coming down, we've got a stitch right underneath that fingernail, one there. That's coming down from that top part. And again, here we've got one, two, three, four. Then above in the square, we've got one, two, one, two. I start from the top right. So we've got first one there then the second yeah that'll do indicate the curves now here we've got what's called a herringbone now where the laces are kind of crossed over so I'm doing the one that's over the top first and the one that goes underneath one that goes over the top, you make that kind of upwards going V. And you've got one right on the 20225 line. And above, and then that one above there, and going right up to the top. A little bit of a crease. And we can indicate where it's really pulled tight. Now, on the front of the body, so again, this is, I'm taking my time. This is how you use the foundations of all of those construction lines to help build your drawing. So here we've got the, there's one right on, there's an X there, right on the 265 line. Nope. Yep, the 265 line. So there's your X at the bottom, then there's one underneath it. Then we can come up and there's one, two, three in this square. So you've got the first one over the top, the line going underneath, the second, and then the third. That curves out, comes down, shows the, the curve of the shape coming over the bottom part of a tummy as it comes out to the top of her hips. So now we just indicate some of the folds. Now we just have her right arm coming out. So if we start from this point up here, we can just indicate the fabric some of the kind of creases in it it comes down it's actually I say we just put that rectangle in for the direction where we want the arm but at the front of your wrist you haven't got as much muscle as it goes back to the elbow so it gets thicker there we need to just indicate the fabric there as well coming out around the back of the bodies we can just curve that top of her arm off And then we've got oh, these lovely shapes, the folds in a dress, at the front. Got that shape and that shadow there. Again, it's just because I'm, I'm just looking and seeing these shapes and just putting some marker point indicator lines in before we put the the actual uh, swirls in. And that's, that'll be the last job that we do. Now again, down at the bottom, we've got the underneath part of a right arm. And it curves up and comes right on the 25225, just under that corner. And then curve it down. And then you just want to follow that curve up to where the thumb is. Now the thumb 
Again, we're just running out of paper, but I'm just indicating that coming off the edge. You've got the fabric, you've got a little V point that curves up, goes off the page. And you've got a kind of horizontal point going up to a wrist and that curves down. Again, just like we did on the bodice, you've got the fabric coming down and making this exposed part where the laces are. And that curves and comes down and then where it joins, slither comes away to the underneath part of a forearm. Now, using the squares, we've got circles. You've got four, so you've got one there, one there, and we want two in between. And then we've got two here, one, two, and then you've got two here, one, two. Going up to that fold at the end. Now we can't see the eyelets on the other side, but we can indicate where they're going to go. And so we've got from the back, that comes down straight, and from that one, kind of comes down just not perfectly straight and this one and this one curves around the arm and the same for this one that curves now if we come out you can see this one curves to join that one and so on From this point it curves to join that line that we've brought down follow the curve of the wrist this one comes over the top curves down now this one we can actually see where it comes through so we need to first Right, I'm just looking to make sure I get these correct. So that one is going to come up over there. And this one from that line goes right the way over to there. That curves down. It's just a case of looking at your reference points and being careful that fabric has really pulled up. I'm just indicating a little triangle for that thumbnail. Now that's the bulk of all of our outline down. Now we just need to indicate these nice swirls that are all on a dress. Again, it's a lot of detail, but just indicating them now makes them very, very simple and easier to do when you actually do your shading. Now, using our reference points, we've just got these nice swirls that are going to be in place. And here we've got, like I say, that's just a C. Again, we've got another little C. And these are just, it's just nice scroll work. following the curve round and this comes down curves around in on itself got that one there that curve comes around and we've got curve goes up comes down curves around back in on itself and this one finishes off, comes around, curls in. It's got a little squiggle at the bottom. And this one here, follow the curve out, curves down, goes back on itself. And goes up, curves around. Just indicate that highlight shadow line coming down the arm and we've got just to the right of the 185 line 
nice swirl comes around and it, you've got some here that are just kind of rubbed off again this you can imagine this was a very very beautiful dress that she's had to fix and put together because they've been kind of banished so again this swirl curves around up comes down through the line comes off curves back around right on the 245 line just bringing this swirl around and it curves up then that one goes up curves off then here curves goes up to a point goes off curves back on itself again that was really quick and simple and we just got two more areas to fill in so I got the swirls down on her hand so just to the right of the one two five just starting off with that curly C shape going in and then you got next to it you got a little curve curl going out and again it's just a case of looking at the squiggles and putting them in in the right kind of size and shape Anyway, that's going to the edge of the hand. We've got a crease line coming down and little squiggles there. And going off by the wrist. And then we've got these final ones on the upper part of a blouse underneath the hair here so we, underneath the 165 to the right of the center line so we've got I'm just gonna so I don't smudge kind of underneath the hair as well and that's like a kind of six shape same underneath it's kind of a six on its side and then this is a kind of reversed one and here on the left hand side we've got a C and you just follow the swirl right the way inside Then underneath we've got a six. And that's a bit like an E. Oh, and then we've got an E underneath. And you can see there's like these are the white bright ones, but then you've got some smaller ones in kind of grey going off. You imagine this would have been a very very elegant kind of ballroom gown high-end high society dress you know, the kind of Christian Dior of the wizarding world so we can just put some squiggles on to indicate some more and then down on the wand we've got some nice little squiggle marks on as well and I've just noticed 
just the little shape inside the left hand side of a dress and then we want to indicate we're here we've got these it's like a B there's the top part and then that's the B part of that shadow but that's the outline all down of Ballatrix Lestrange Helena Bonham Carter and it's a lot of complex lines but the hard work was done at the beginning building up and now by doing this good foundation work you'll be able to build upon it when you put the sh shading in and the shadow anyway now we are going to rub out now normally I would use this large Mars plastic uh, eraser and I'm going to use this just quickly to get around the outside and I do just artily kind of rub out all the lines but I don't get rid of them right to the edge and as I say you put your lines down much lighter than I've done and that way it's uh, easier for you to remove them for your drawing and anyway I'm just knocking these off really quick but just kind of artily leaving traces of them so you can see them now I do have a Mars plastic and a pen it's just a, a smaller point and it just means I can kind of get inside all of the nice detailed outlines that we've got in our drawing of Ballatrix and it means I don't have to destroy and remove and I can even get you know putting it on its side I can get inside her fingers and whereas if I tried to use that very large rubber I would lose a lot of the working out that we actually did and this is as important as all of your drawing now I actually quite like this how this hand is chopped off uh, you aren't supposed to chop hands off in portraiture or feet and things like that but I found it uh, quite an interesting technique you know if you're doing a very formal portrait and you chopped you got bare arms and you just chopped them off it could look a little bit weird but again it, you've just got to evaluate what is working and what isn't so here because I've got this pen eraser I can get rid of the construction lines the guidelines the the, the ruled on grid lines from within the drawing that I actually put down he says rubbing out a bit of the nose but if I'm actually very careful I can remove a lot of those lines that mean when we actually start shading in we've not got them there in our way now I am going to sweep off all of that that we've just done again you can use your hand I just use this big old brush 
and I'll sweep them onto a piece of paper. That's off camera at the bottom. Rather than sweeping them on the floor, and then I can just put them nicely in the bin. Rather than then having to tidy them up a lot more. Now, for an absolute precision detail, I do have an even smaller one. You can get very small rubbers, but this one's an electric one. And I can just touch that on. You can hear it just, it's like using an electric pencil sharpener. It's, it saves a lot of time. But these are relatively inexpensive and easy to get hold of. And it just allows you to clean up a lot of the lines. Like I said, I can just touch in between those bits and the lines have actually come out. There's the grid line, I'm just getting rid of that. And then all the way up, this is the actual center line. So I've just managed to get rid of that. Horizontal line coming across a chest, down the front. And there, so again, we've got a much cleaner image now that we can start shading in. There we go, and big smudge on the side. Just gently pulling off those numbers a little bit. That's the most I think I've ever kind of rubbed out. But again, it just puts the focus on Balatrix for us. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. We've got the outline down. Now we can start shading her in. So <clears throat> now we're going to Brush in, oh, brush in. <clears throat> we are going to draw in, I'm using the 2B pencil, the tone, a mid tone, all the way over. Now, <clears throat> there are some brighter highlights because this is a, a kind of full body portrait and not just a close-up of the face I'm not going to leave I mean like here we've got a lot of bright area but I'm not going to leave a lot of the paper bare I'm just going to cover it where the flesh is And I'm using the flat side of the pencil. So that. I can just get a nice smooth tone down. And I'm just going for a light tone at first. And we're just filling in all the. Flash. I mean, I've just noticed, <coughs> excuse me, frog in the throat. Just noticed there. You don't need to do that. <coughs> excuse me, if you've actually rubbed out the grid lines, but I hadn't. So now we're coming down on the fingers. I'm just putting, like I say, just 
filling this kind of mid-tone in. And it just helps. And then we'll pull out. The, I'm just getting some kitchen roll, <clears throat> the highlights with our putty rubber. So I'm just smoothing this. You don't have to do this. <clears throat> As I've said before in other videos, this is just something that I actually like doing. In that I kind of like just smoothing out that first layer because it gives me a good basis excuse me just having a sip of water to then actually build upon the drawing and so now I'm just squinting and just seeing where more of the shadows are you can see here underneath the neck we've got more shadow coming down right underneath the chin on a neckline now the upper lip and then the lower lip just leaving a little bit at the top, but just filling the sides in, just adding a little bit more shade. Then in her eye, the eye socket above the left eye. And you can see how much darker it is in this area just above a tear duct and then the same coming underneath and then a right eye underneath the hair is darker it's just a nice flatter area of tone We've got this little area of light underneath the nose. And already you can see Balatrix just really starting to stare out at you. Then we've got this shadow down on the right shoulder. And it doesn't matter about you just going over the <clears throat> the edge of the line into the dark because that's obviously going to be darker. I'm just quickly just building, looking around and just building these tones up. And we're doing a, a relatively quick. Uh, sketch filling this in because there's not a lot of area to actually fill in like the face is much smaller you know if we were doing a full portrait if you look at the Ariana Grande one that was a very very long lesson because there was a lot of tonal work to do very carefully uh, all over the drawing and so we had to be very careful all the time Whereas this, it's, it's relatively small. So we can fill in these areas quite quickly. So now we're coming down the side of a left cheek, down to a chin. Then we've got this lovely shape underneath the bottom lip going to the edge and up the side. Now, you can really smooth this. Now we're coming up the side of a cheek. Uh, you know, 
very, very slowly if you want to. But I'm just trying to show you. Now we're doing underneath the hair, going up to the hairline. What you can do relatively quickly. We spent about an hour getting the outline down. And that's you know, quite a significant amount of time. Now across the top of her nose, got a little bit of shadow in between. And then over her forehead here, coming off the side. Little bit of extra shade on the side. I'm just lightly letting the pencil do the work. So you've got this area of light here. And again, we'll pull it out with a putty rubber in a bit. And then this, the tone underneath the hair, it's actually quite flat a little bit. You know, where we've got this lovely, solid, chiselled shadow on a right cheek. It's actually the hair has kind of flattened it out. Now going up the side of her head from the side of her eye. Then down the side of her nose. Just carefully using the point. Got that shadow coming underneath the left eye. Just gently. And this is what you can do really quickly. And like I say, I went very slowly in actually trying to get the outline down very, very accurately because that's creating the shapes for us. And down the top lip to the corner of her mouth, very slight. Got the highlight in the center, little shape on the left hand side. And I'm just touching carefully with the pencil. And the right hand side of her nose, going up underneath the hair to the shadow underneath. corner of her eye socket and just slightly increasing the shade between the two eyes the top of her nose that's looking really really lovely Now, top lip. Again, I'm resting my hand just off the page. Just being very, very careful. And just using the tip of the pencil to fill everything in. So there you can see I've just increased the tone underneath the top lip. Now the darkness, and again, this is all being done with a 2B pencil. And we may not need to use anything other than a 2B pencil. But I might use a 4B in the, to fill in the darker areas on her dress. Now a bottom lip, we've got this kind of line that comes around. And it's just slightly darker in the corners. And then you've got that little shade underneath the center line at the top. Again, just increase the definition up the side of a cheek and the t 
tone underneath and it's darker on this side. Coming underneath the chin. Just bringing the shadow down. We've got a lovely little shadow line right at the bottom of the neck in between the two collarbones. That lovely little dip. Then shadow of top of the collarbone. Then right down the neck. And we've got this lovely kind of B-shaped shadow. And it just softens out. And then underneath the collarbones, a little bit of shadow underneath the bird. And the necklace. Now I'm putting these lines in, this tone in, just using little cross hatching lines. And when we put the hair in, it'll really help to build up and then we can intensify any shadows that we need to. Again, just carefully increasing the shadow underneath the neck. And then you can see coming across the top of a chest. That's a bit brighter. And then a little bit of shape tone forming the shape of a breast. Now, I've got the shadow underneath the right arm, curving up a little bit of extra tone on the top of the arm. Now down on the hands. This is just very quick, I'm still using the side of the pencil. The joint on the finger, the same on the third finger underneath, joint, and then the little finger, shadow underneath the bottom, just indicating the joints. And then underneath the ring it's much darker. Again, the edge where it's going to go next to the bodice is darker too. And then a fingernails. Got that quite sickly colour on them. So I'm just putting a little bit of tone in and underneath her arm. You can just indicate the shade even on the left hand. Now I am going to come in and rest my hand on this so as I don't smudge because we really want to be careful while we detail up this eye. So <clears throat> I've just done the pupil now we're going around the very edge of the iris. Dark up to the top. Be 
being very careful <clears throat> to leave a little highlight at the top showing and then her eyelash at the top making that dark curving down to tear duct in the corner and then we've got the eyelash coming down on the right hand side I can just indicate some of the eyelashes coming off and then we want the fold above the eye coming right down to the side and then we want the shadow right on the corner and in the corner of a socket and then her eyebrow we can indicate that and I'm just doing some little lines but I'm still going in the direction of the eyebrow curving this down and then the shadow coming underneath the left eye and then I'm just indicating just twisting the pencil using the sharp point her eyelashes on the bottom shadow on the top of her eyeball very gently just filling that in and there already you can really see Balatrix staring out of the page at us going the curve right into the corner And this shadow in the fold coming right underneath her eye. Now, right eye, we need to darken that down. Got the eyebrow coming across we've got all of this hair coming over so we can actually we haven't got to be as precise getting the detail up to this level because the hair is going to be covering the eye but we do need the tone and the shape correct underneath and it says dark so doing the shape of the pupil and the iris then we're darkening down the eyeball and then we want the shade right in the upper part of her eye socket And then coming down underneath her right eye and then we can just bring some more of the shade down over a cheek and that's looking really really lovely So now, oops, just throw my pencil around. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a real frog in my throat now. 
I'm using the side of the pencil and where we've got all of this fantastic frizz. And I'm just looking at the dark. I'm just creating that shadow area right at the top. And now I'm just bringing the hair down carefully, but I'm just doing all of, you know, just little S wiggly lines all the way down. To indicate Balatrix's hair. Quickly and carefully at the same time, but also being fairly free, but I'm, I'm just making sure that I'm following the direction that I need to for Balatrix's hair. And there already you can see it's giving us that three dimensionality that we need <clears throat> to Balatrix's face because the dark is going in and framing her face. And I've literally just drawn over the eye, which you can still see through the hair. But because I'm using the side of the pencil, it's not obliterated what's underneath. Now, filling in lots of tone just getting lighter as we go out to the edge and I'm just squiggling being very impressionistic now I'm just using the tip of the pencil just lightly just indicating little squiggles inside for the very fine strands of hair that are all essentially just all over the place. And that's looking pretty good. So now if we just come down this edge of a face We can see where this comes around her jawline. And then we've got this one kind of column of darker hair coming down. little patches of shade very lightly on the top leaving all of that beautiful highlight and then coming down onto the shoulder And again, just increasing the detail of this hair coming over a forehead. And swirling over her eye. And down the side of her nose. Over her cheek. Just cascading down over her chin. I'm just doing like these S, little wiggly S shapes. 
pressing on with the sharp of the pencil and I'm just twisting the pencil more. And that gives me the darker definition that I need. Again, I'm doing all of this with this 2B pencil. That's looking pretty good. And the hair coming up from the front. Again, I'm just adding these squiggles. And they work in conjunction with the flat tones that you put down before to give you the impression of that mass of very frizzy hair. Now we have got a load of highlights that are down here. Hang on, I'm just going to sharpen my pencil. I'll try and pull these out. Well, we won't try. We will pull out some of the highlighted tone. using the putty rubber. Now again, because I sharpened the pencil, I've got this very fine point. And where the hair is just cascading down on the left here, the left cheek, we can indicate that just nicely. And it's the sharpness of the point that is giving us the wispy tone that we actually like. Even though it's highlighted on the picture, you're creating something with a pencil to give the impression of highlighted wispy hair. And this is what you do when you are creating the illusion and impression of this fantastic frizzy hair. And so we're just indicating as much as we can carefully framing Balatrix's head And then we can come back in with a putty rubber and we'll pull out some highlights in a minute. But before we do that, I'm going to come in and I'm just going to use this cotton bud very carefully to soften all of the tones. This is just something personal. You could have just, you can leave it complete. Uh, with the pencil lines on or you can <clears throat> soften the tones down underneath the hair and the, like there across the head top of the forehead where the hair joins <clears throat> the hairline at the, the top of the forehead and it's just a simple way like I say you can use a smudging stick uh, <clears throat> blending stump, paper blending stump, or you can use a cotton bud. Uh, you can use your kitchen roll, or if you can get it to a point close enough. But that just feathers everything in. And you can use it as a drawing tool. I'm picking up some pencil and now pushing it underneath the nose. And just darkening that down a lot. And it just smooths out. It's just personal preference. But then when you come back in with your putty rubber, I'm pulling it to a, this is the clean one. Remember I've got two now. Uh, that's the old one. 
that's what happens to them. And you use this as a drawing tool. So I'm coming in, I'm just trying to pull this to a long point so you can see. There we go. And now pulling out that highlight up the center of Balatrix's nose just really helps to lift the image and the more that we do so I'm going to top of the lip highlight across the top of the lip the center of the bottom lip just gently dabbing on the chin reflected highlight underneath the cheek and then this little part by the right hand side of a nose underneath the hair and then I'm just dappling carefully in between the hair and you just get that little effect of the light dappling through the hair onto a forehead just pulling some of the tone off Again, the same on the cheek and then right in by a tear duct highlight on the inside of her up lower eyelid same on the left eye right in by the tear duct the crease above the top and then right up at the corner of a socket see we've got this highlight all the way down and then on a cheek and this bit underneath her eye just dappling carefully And there you can see three dimensionality starting to appear right up at the top of a forehead again a putty rubber is as valuable a part of your drawing equipment as your pencils you can learn to use this as a valuable part of your drawing skills. Again, just lifting some of that pencil off very carefully from underneath her eye. And that's looking pretty good. I hope you're enjoying this. This is absolutely fantastic. Now, these down... We've got a sharp highlight either side of that necklace. Little indication on a neck. And then coming down onto a chest. Some highlights on the silver bird. And again, that's a stronger highlight on that white part you can see over a left breast. And then just gently, softly lightening some of the parts going over onto the right chest and right breast. Now, highlight on the back of her arm. And then down on the thumb. And the tops of the fingers. 
Again, just dappling carefully and gently. And then you can just come back in. I'm just going to use the paper to rest on. Using the sharp of the pencil. In fact, I really need a sharp point. Darkening that crease line in on her upper eyelid. The tone's right in the corner. Very gently. filling some of that tone in underneath both eyes that's really really lovely I say it's just so amazing this is the joy of drawing this is what you can get from developing your drawing skills you just get to have fun with so many different subjects so again I'm now just indicating some more hair cascading down past the neck increasing the darkness on the necklace and the little bird pendant and here on this side we've got to really intensify the darkness under her neck And then right underneath the bottom lip, we've got a little bit more shadow. And that comes out to the left hand side. And we've got shadow going up her left cheek and up behind her hair now I'm going to come in with the older putty rubber I'm just pulling it to a fine point and now I'm going over where highlights are and this will give us some more of those wispier details again coming down the left hand side we've got this fantastic highlight that then comes over the side of a face with wispier lighter hair And just by indicating these quickly that's a way that you can increase that effect of that wispy hair and the light the lines that you put down earlier with the sharp end of the pencil become lighter but the definition is still there So here we've got a stronger highlight, so I'm just pulling that out a little bit. And then right by her face, got these little S lines. So I'm just 
wiggling the rubber to give me that definition, that little kind of wiggly highlight. And you can see that that's looking like that kind of wispy hair. And you just do this until you are satisfied that you've got enough down and on. Now again, on the right hand side where the hair is coming out, we've got the wispy bits like we've just done on her left hand side of her head, but all coming out to the side. That is lovely. Again, we can build up some more and we will. As we put more tone down on Balatrix and we build up a dress. Again, I'm just dabbing very, very carefully, but very with a sharp point. And it just pulls off enough pencil to give that kind of soft tone that we. getting from the highlights and it just gives us the volume in a hair that we're actually after so again I'm now just coming in with the cotton bud softening that shadow underneath the neck and that's looking really really lovely now I've lost my 2B pencil. Shock horror. So it's rolled away. There we go. Got it. It had rolled off behind my desk. Now we're going to quickly shade in Balatrix's top. So here we've got crease line coming down it's kind of darker coming down underneath this sleeve but I'm using the flat side of my 2B pencil and I'm, I'm going to try and do all of this drawing just using this 2B pencil I did this with uh, Billy Billingham, Mark Billy Billingham of SAS Who Dares Wins. Well, this is just showing you what you can do with one pencil. And it's good sometimes to do this. Again, it's a, it's a bit of a challenge. But it gives you confidence that you can do many things quickly with one pencil. So I'm squinting, kind of seeing where all the shaders and the tone. And I'm looking, I'm just trying to not obliterate this hair that's coming down. So I'm leaving that a little bit. As best I can. Now just wiggling some of the darker hair shapes on. And you can just leave some of those highlights showing.
that's the hair coming down. Just sharpening the pencil again. Now we've got all of these lovely shapes. Of this patterning on her dress. So I'm just coming down and indicating these darker shadows first. Just being careful. around the little scrolls that we actually put in. Again, if you draw over them, you can see I can shade over them and they're still there with that lighter tone. We can then come back in and highlight them. And we've got that arm going right, the shade going right the way up. And we got the shade coming down. Exposed, showing the so I need so I don't smudge everything. The lace showing through. And this is where you can quickly cross hatch. And this will give you the tone and three dimensionality of the arm coming around. So here we've got a highlight right the way down the back and I'm bringing the dark just down inside quickly and carefully and then just filling in. the shade filling the tone in all the way inside that shape coming down a wrist and then on a hand and I've got quite a flat part the pencil and that's giving me the darker deeper tones that I'm after Filling that tone in quickly, and that's really good. Just filling that tone in as quickly as we possibly can. But still allowing us to see those scrolls underneath 
that we can kind of come back in and add some extra detail to by using the putty rubber. You can actually use a, uh, a white pencil crayon or a grey pencil crayon if you've got one. Might have a little go with one of those in a moment. Got the shade there. Coming all the way up the arm. So now, if I pull this into a point, just indicate some of the swirls. That actually looks quite nice. Now, I've got, now I've got a white and a grey pencil crayon. See, that's not light enough. just won't go over the graphite it's the wrong kind of pencils and different pencil crayons do different effects and so I'm going to quickly again this is I'm being really really quick if you really wanted to be super accurate You'd either have to get the right kind of pencil crayon, pastel, uh, and I just don't have, I haven't got any pastel pencils left. Uh, and that, you know, like chalk pencils, you could use those. And those, those pencils cranes that I've got they are like 20 odd years old. Now I want this strong highlight right up the back. That's quite good. Here we've got all of these swirls just being loosely indicated using this putty rubber. So I'm just going to come back in. quickly with the pencil just to give some definition there to some of those swirls And then we come down the arm and we've got them on the hand. And 
and that's okay for now and we'll carry on and then work across the dress so now just working my way over so on these I'm being very careful to not obliterate I'm, I'm still doing them as quickly as I can the uh, lovely little scroll work just because these are so visible right on the front and so prominent so now if I and you can see very carefully indicate the dark shadows of the creases then that's where the hair comes all the way down we've got darker crease line shadow and these kind of fold lines in the fabric Again, I'm just filling this in really quickly now. And we want the darker tone. Of the fabric just coming round. And then where it comes up to the edge of the fabric it's a bit darker we've got a triangle of dark there and then underneath the hair and the kind of I mean, it's not a collar really but just that folded edge tone coming all the way down that left hand shoulder right down the front and you got that slight lighter and you can just build you can see where the shape of the body creates the curve and the dark and this is what we can accentuate as you build your tonal areas up in your drawing you can just go back into certain areas and just quickly increase the tone that you need so we needed a lot more dark on a left arm and the where the folds and the creases of the fabric just come round and then even around all of these little swirls you can use the flat of the pencil and fill in a large area quite quickly and still keep the definition of your lovely little patterns
Yeah, that's that's looking really, really lovely. Increase that elbow. And coming right down on the left hand. Again, around the thumb, just being very careful, going right up to the thumb. And now, all of this leather work, if we put a dark shadow using the sharp of the point, underneath all of the bits that we need. The centres of the joins in between. All of the pieces of leather on a kind of is it a battle corset? Who knows? just indicating all of those darks and then even here where you've got the thumb we can indicate right up to the thumb and we've got a reflected highlight off the thumb onto the leather and then we can just gently fill that in Again, I said I'm using this 2B pencil all the way. And by doing that, it's giving me a, a kind of unified tone across the drawing. Now, a 4B pencil, a 6B, an 8B, you'd get the black much easier and much quicker but sometimes it's just a really good challenge to limit yourself with just one pencil and see what you can do so now, I say it's a darker highlight along here, but just indicating now, pulling out some of the highlights on the hair going up. That's that little bit of highlight coming down. indicating the hair coming down over the left shoulder and then you come back in with the putty rubber just pull those little wispy highlights off then just put those squiggles back in on top The same goes for the swirls underneath. Just pulling off those highlights. Then you've got the ones down on the dress. Again, I'm just indicating just some nice little quick swirls with the putty rubber. And it just kind of indicates the pattern that's there. And then you can just come in with a pencil 
and just give a little bit of a curved definition around some of the lines that you just brought off. And it makes them stand out a little bit. And it's about you, you are creating an illusion with a pencil. And if you want absolute photographic, you've got to spend days and days and days. But hopefully I'm showing you how you can get a very, very good impression without going for the absolute photorealism. Purely by making marks that convince your eye that you're seeing what you think you are seeing. In this case, Balatrix Lestrange with a very, very detailed dress. So again, all of these leather bits, I'm putting a shadow underneath. And down underneath this finger, the bottom, you want a darker shadow. Definition up the side of the wand. And we've got these cross parts. Kind of herringbone, cross laces, coming up the front of a corset. A real dark shadow there, where a left arm comes down and connects. And then the same with these crossed parts. By putting the very dark line on, when you put the, like we did with the hair, when you put the other tone on top, they'll still show through. So, just sharpening my pencil so I've got a flider, flat, a wider flat side. Flider, what? <laughs> Getting my words mixed up but you get this kind of lovely tone and sheen that's on the leather and you can quickly fill in these larger areas where you want the darker shadows. I've got a real dark one down here, coming around the wand. Dark shadow going up there. Now down in between the fingers. We've got that dark. Again, I really like pressing on hard with the pencils. Just personal preference. Some people really like uh, flat, matte. So you'd have to use a charcoal pencil. But I, I really love the effect of scratching the pencil onto the paper and getting that burnished effect. Again, it's just personal preference. So now as I go over all of those knots, 
they are all darkened down. And kind of become leathery and soft. The tone of the pencil is doing all of that work for me. And because we could put those very dark highlights on, uh, highlights, the very dark lines on, when we put the highlights on in a moment, it will make the laces stand out, but you've already got the effect that you're after already built in to the drawing because it's all in your preparation and under drawing. So coming down the side, across the bottom, So that's looking really, really lovely. Just pulling up some little highlights on the leather, laces, again, just dabbing really quickly. Up by the fingers. Those little leather laces connecting. Again, I'm coming around by the fingers and I'm just building the shadows up carefully. And just being careful to add the definition where I need it to. We can go right up to the laces here, bringing the shadow up. Right down on top. And that just really helps it to stand out. Same in the dark. on the corset there, darken that down a little bit. Now on this belt it's just got lots of kind of horizontal lines so I can just squiggle them nicely but we've got the shadow coming underneath the finger and going onto that glove. where the joints are on the finger. Shadow underneath that ring. My paper's just gone straight onto the floor. Here we've got that dark shadow right underneath. Then Shadow right at the bottom, dark, but then where we've got, we can see the folds in the skirt going down. I'm just going in the direction that I need to, just indicating with the pencil. And we put the dark shadow underneath the bottom of the corset. And that makes that stand out really well.
little dark shadow on the edge. I need to sharpen the pencil again. Now, using the flat of the pencil, we've got this dark patch underneath on the right shoulder underneath the hair coming down. And then it lightens up as it comes over a right breast. We want the darker shadow line coming down the inside of the curve there. And then shadow underneath the breast in towards the center. And we've got these folds that are coming out from the center. And that crease comes down. And we've got this little triangle. And we've got the dark tone coming right the way over to the edge. But we'll be able to pull that out with a highlight in a minute. We've got the shadow again going up underneath the hair. really intensify the darkness and that's what gives us the 3d form that we're after so now here we can see we've got a ringlet of hair coming down We can increase that ringlet of hair. Now, on the right breast, we've got to indicate some of those light and swirls. Just pulling out some on the left hand side. Pulling out that highlight on the dress, on the curve going up. Coming down the edge. And there, that's looking pretty good. Not much to go now. So now we want to fill in quickly the left, the right wrist. So I'm going to be careful to not fill in all the eyelets. Again, I'm using the side of the pencil. I'm just indicating the direction of the creases that are in the fabric. And the creases are caused by, so we've got these little V shapes. And they're caused by the fabric being pulled by the laces through the eyelets. 
and then when it comes up to the rest I've got a dark shadow and then creases right by the rest and then we've got a dark shadow right underneath the bottom just going around all the kind of eyelet shapes and then the shadow going right the way along the bottom of that fabric and then we're just increasing the tone on the skin it's darker obviously within the body because that's where the light can't get to that shadow goes right along to the edge now her wand got this lovely tone going down with a highlight right on top and then you've got a shadow kind of down the center and then comes to the edge of the wand and then it's darker So we need the highlight on top and then just a little highlight up the centre, smooth that out with your finger and you can just indicate some of the swirls and the shapes of the wand. So I'm going to sharpen my pencil again and we're kind of into nice final details now. Just indicating some more detail on the nails. And on the fingers. where the joints are coming down to that hand just highlighting some of the fingernails some shadows and detail lines around the fingers The ring on a finger, just adding some shadows and some center tone. Thumb again, just pulling out some little highlights. some of the patterning on the dress and just keep looking at the reference and you can fill in as much as you would like just indicating some more of the frizzy hair shadow on the neck And then just again carefully pick out your highlights. Got the 
top of the collarbone. And we've got what I need. we've got the laces on this side again. To darken some down. Let's put some tone in. Where they connect across. And we've got the edges of the fabric on the top of a sleeve. We can darken down where the arm comes to the shoulder. That lace coming across. And again, just bringing some hair down makes a huge difference and for the soft side of the pencil just got a shadow off that lace that's sticking up in the air just move that up across the arm That's looking pretty good. And just coming in a little bit of definition on the center of the mouth. Sharpening up the nostrils a bit. And the shadows underneath. And it's just a case of just looking and being very careful and just adding enough to get the effect that you want and then right by the side of the nostrils I'm using the dirty putty rubber so as I'm not pulling off too much center of the mouth it's actually not pulling off enough so I'm coming in with the cleaner putty rubber to just spot in the highlights that I need underneath the nose and off to the edge And just adding that little bit of tone back in. And that, I say, we can just, you can fiddle and faff absolutely loads. But that, I'm actually really pleased with. I hope you you guys are. I hope you've had a, a really good time. You know, I'm looking at it and I can't see. Well, I can see you can keep going for ages. You know, it's like, you know, I can build the shadows up more down here. On the arm, on the elbow, down underneath. You can keep going for a long, long time. But there comes a point where you just have to go, do you know what? That's it, that'll do. 
and I just want to help you and encourage you in your drawing so like I say I hope you've enjoyed that I just need to put on Billy 2020 and that's fantastic thank you so so much please do like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video take care enjoy your drawing ta -da.